What's going on everybody? Welcome back to G Myers World and today we're going to be talking about these insane rookie ratings when it comes to speed. Now some of these guys didn't really like their ratings and they were all over Twitter going crazy but that's to be expected. These guys are going, you know, they want the most. A lot of them argued about their strength, um, different things like that, the agility, whatever it is, right? They didn't like the way that the, um, the Madden ratings people adjusted the way that they actually are in the game. Now, this is what I want to point out right now. I want you guys to think back, but those of my Madden veterans that remember what player had 97 speed in Mutt 16 that was a rookie that destroyed the game? Ding, 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 ding. Rashad Perriman. Now remember this, right? This is the interesting thing about the way that this game is. Marquise, what is he, like 5'9"? He's like, he's a tinier guy. Like he's not ready to rock and roll. Like Rashad Perriman, like 6'2". So you gotta remember, in Madden 16, before they patched it and made everybody be able to do the OBJ catch, he was insane because he was tall and fast. He was more like a, a DK Metcalf. You know what I'm saying, bro? And that's what made him so dangerous. But let's just look at these speeds and try to figure out which ones are gonna be the glitchiest ones in Madden Ultimate Team. Now, obviously, for those of you guys that have been doing all your rookie premieres, I've been sharing my progress with you. Right now, I think I'm up to six of 10. Um, I will get all 10. It's just that I got, I don't, I'm trying not to sell off my team unless I have to. And EA made it very, very easy to get all 10 this year, like easier than ever. So all you gotta do is be a little bit patient with the way that you actually adjust your stuff and you should be fine. It's not gonna be that big of a deal uh, getting all 10 done if you've been playing the game throughout the entire year and you got Mutt Master and you've been around with me for all that time. It should be re relatively easy uh, in all honesty, all right? But a lot of us are, are gonna have this player on our squad, Marquise Brown. Now, 97 speed is wild, but remember, these are the regs. These are regs ratings. These are not ultimate team ratings. So don't, I wanted to clear that up because some of you guys were asking, yo, bro, that's gonna be crazy. They starting them off like that in month. No, bro, this is regs right here. So when you look at these ratings, understand that it's gonna be adjusted for Madden Ultimate Team, but in all honesty, they're still gonna be that fast when compared to the other cards that are released. So they're gonna make it correspond however, all right? So now look, if you have him as a rookie premiere, say he comes out in August and he balls out, all right? Just say he balls out, he goes out there, does whatever he wants, and um, you know EA is like, yo, we gotta give this guy an upgrade. He's gonna get it not only in the regs, but he's gonna get it in Mutt, and that's gonna make him even with him being that small, remember, in Madden 20, if you guys played the beta, or even if you didn't play the beta, and you've been watching some of the videos I've been putting out explaining how the beta is, you would understand, like, I'm telling you this right now, if this guy gets out in front of anybody, it's a touchdown. Like, it's, you're not gonna be, you know like how the old Maddens, uh, 19, 18, 17, 16, you'll be running by yourself, and then out of nowhere on the right side of the screen, the guy just runs over and rips your pants off? That doesn't happen anymore. When you get out in front, it's like real football. Like, you know, Sundays, Mondays, and Thursdays, bro. Like, it's ready to go. Dudes are gone. And that's what I, re that was the first thing that I looked. Bro, when it happened, I was like, yes, they got this part right. I've been waiting four years for them to realize that when you have speed like that, guys should not be able to catch you. And EA fixed that in 20. So look, he's gonna be probably one of the most dangerous cards in month, just off the bat. Regardless of his height, he's not gonna be able to go up there and do double me and all the other whack out, you know, whack out stuff. But eventually, if he's good enough, he may work himself up, work himself up to an X factor. If that is the case, he's gonna be very, very dominant. All right, because all you're gonna need to do is just give, you know, slant, whatever. If you get the thing that I want you guys to point out, I want, I mean, I want to point out to you guys right here is the strength. All right, now his strength being a 44. If he gets pressed by like Jalen Ramsey, all these big body dudes, he's not getting off the line in time. And with the way the pass rush is, you're gonna get sacked, bro. And you're gonna like it. And that's just the bottom line. That's just the way that it is. And after you guys start to understand more of the ratings and the way that they've adjusted everything, I think it's gonna be a lot easier for you guys to appreciate what Madden 20 is. But the reason that I point out what, like these speeds are wild and ridiculous because at this point, if you just look at it from where it is, I think Marquis Goodwin won that like that really fast race thing that they had with like Chad Ochocinco or whatever. But they, the, the people that have been in the league that are actively playing, the only player that I can see, the only two players is Marquis Goodwin and maybe um, Tyreek Hill. But we still have to wait to see what's gonna happen with him. You know, we met with the commissioner, we're waiting to see what's gonna happen with him as far as suspension. But I'm talking about launch day. Like as far as speed goes, I don't know if they can keep him as a 97 and don't make Tyreek Hill faster. 
based on everything we've already seen in the league. Same thing with Marquise Goodwin. I don't know. Like, it's it's weird the way that everything is going, but that's what scares me the most about it. Because if this guy is that fast, just imagine what Tyreek Hill's supposed to be. So now, regardless of the overall that he's going to be in Mutt, let's take let's let's just go over to Mutt now. Regardless of his overall in Mutt, Tyreek Hill is going to be a, a, a savage beast, an animal. He's going to be wild, and, bro. It's going to be craziness going on. So this is what I'm going to tell you guys right now. Height also is very, very important. So we're going to have to make sure. This is the number one thing I want to keep in, and for my viewers only. We have to make sure that what the beta showed us translate to what's released on release day. Once we see that the height still matters, we may not even care about how fast these guys are. You know, McCole Hardman, Andy Isabella. See, DK Metcalf I like because he's taller and he has a 95 speed, so he'll be able to get up there. Because remember, if the player that you're playing against, it's sort of like they didn't really go all in with the way Madden 15 was because Madden 15 was pure dominance if you were taller. It was a wrap. But they made it a little bit better. And I and I lab this in the beta. Inside franchise mode, franchise mode with like tall tight ends against like little wide receivers. I mean, I mean little cornerbacks. I did it and made sure like, all right, I see what they're doing. Let me see how far they're willing to take it. And I would, it, it was, like I said, they adjusted it a lot from 19. In 19, the gate, like, they didn't do a good job of making height really matter. Because Randy Moss would get picked off by like a four foot four, a four foot four uh, strong safety, a free, like it was stupid. They've done a better job of allowing the big body receivers to go up and get the ball, even without double me. Because I used other players that didn't have superstar X factors or anything like that, and they were still able to do a lot of these things that I'm talking about. So when you look at the speed factor of all of these players, DK Metcalf is probably gonna be one of the more dominant players. And that's simply because he has the height and the speed. Now, when it comes to the fact of how you wanna build your team, if you can have both, you take both. Because obviously with the way that the game is designed and the way I'm telling you right now, the way that the players play, speed is gonna be one of the most important factors ever in the actual game. So if you can get both of them, you get them. But I would go for the taller, faster players. All right. And as you start to go down and, um, you know, the speed decreases, 93s, whatever like that, these play a lot of these players have decent height. They have decent um, acceleration. They have different things. Like when you go to Greedy Williams at corner, that 93 speed, if you put him in the right zone and you back him off a little bit, he shouldn't be able, you know, Marquise Brown shouldn't be able to burn him every time, but you just won't be able to really press him that much. Let's take a look at Greedy Williams speed. I mean, uh, yeah, well, his speed is a, 90, a 93, but his strength is only a 54. So with the plus 10, you know, that it's going to be gauged differently. Like, I don't really, I got to wait to see exactly how that's going to translate. But again, with the way that you have to kind of, it's like a chess match now. You're not playing checkers, you're just throwing it in quadruple coverage no more. So a lot of a lot of guys that were getting away with that in 19, though they're going to be very, very upset and not too happy about the way that the game actually plays simply because you can't do whatever you want and you have to go based on what your player can actually do as opposed to just looking at it like, yo, it's mad and it doesn't matter. I'm just going to do this. I'm going to do that. You can't do that anymore. So when you look at these traits, right? Say, for instance, you 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 go with Marquise Brown and you take the 5'9 guy and, you don't, and, and you're playing against the guy that has DK Metcalf. You might say to me, all right, Jemiah, who's going to be able to get off more uh, based on the attributes of what Madden 20 is? I'm going to always side with DK Metcalf. Because look, for me, can you beat them deep more in 20 than you could in 19? Yes. And that animation where like you get the rat catch and the guy is like, you know, jogging with the guy on his back, that's still in the game. But also what's in the game is you can actually get past deep blues now. So for those of us that's been going through this and been go yelling at the top of our lungs for the last three, four years, that just because somebody's in the deep blue zone, they shouldn't be able to stay with your player. I believe that EA finally listened to that. And if people press, even if they're in a deep blue, whichever one they're in, you can be in whatever they want. You know what I'm saying? You can adjust it to the other, um, you know, the other straight up deep blue, whatever they come out in. It doesn't matter what type of deep blue it is. If they get the step after the press, they can actually beat it more often than not. Now remember, a lot of us that played up, played against cover four drop and things of that nature, we know what it was about. Dudes were getting away with all kinds of stuff with cover four drop. They were showing blitz, they were doing all kinds of weird stuff. That no longer happens. Now, we're gonna have to gauge, again, which speed threshold is what we need, okay? 
Do we need the speed and the height? Those are the things. Is acceleration more important? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's certain things we're gonna have to do. Like Madden 25, acceleration was so huge, you could see it in franchise mode when you upgraded players even one acceleration point that they move differently. We've gotten away from that over the last four or five years. So now that we're getting back to something that we're all getting excited about as far as like, yo, I'm gonna be able to have a team where I know if you do that, you're done every time. What happens now? Defensively, you have to give something up. You see what I'm saying? Because if, if a guy comes out with Marquise Brown and he's doing whatever he wants, you know what I'm saying? Like he's gonna beat you over the top regularly. So you're gonna have to step back. That means you're gonna give up underneath route hitches. You're gonna give up drags. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to figure out what you're willing to give up because everybody plays so differently. But these are just some of the things that I want you guys to look out for. Keep these names in mind. And for my mutt dudes, that's what we're gonna look at early on. Because if we can get some players for cheap that have decent speed like that, you know, we're gonna be good with that. We're gonna be good to go. Just remember what I'm telling you. Most of us already got Marquise Brown because we did rookie premieres. So we'll be already a step ahead of the game if you have him already. But even with that, if we could snag a DK Metcalf if, if they, keep the, they keep the game the same exact way as the beta, we're gonna have a lot of fun utilizing him against any kind of cornerback. Because if they put him in different situations, we could do stop and goes. We can do different things with him and he should be able to take off. So remember the, the, the biggest thing I want you to take away from this, regardless of the rookie speed and all that stuff like that, when you get out in front in Madden 20, you go on. And it's pretty much a wraparoni with cheese. I want to thank you guys and girls for watching. Let me know what you're most excited about in Madden 20. That, that'll be here in the next couple weeks. I'm going to see you guys and girls next time. One love.